hi guys okay <laughs> i have not updated you guys in a minute so we have made it to florida y'all so there is a there was apparently like a storm that moved through florida which earlier in the day i was told that the storm was getting ready to move it through but i didn't know like how serious it was going to be so right when I was getting ready to head to the airport, right when we were getting ready to head to the airport, I got a notification on my phone saying that the flight was delayed. So our flight originally was supposed to leave at 7. It had been pushed back to 9. Um, well, it was supposed to leave at 7.30. It got pushed back to 9. And then I got a notification saying it's like, stay, pay attention or whatever. And I was like, oh my God, I really don't feel like flying that late. But... <laughs> I checked like every because I was like, you know what? I'll just get another flight because I, I don't have time. So I checked. <laughs> this was a dumb thought because, like, obviously, literally every outgoing flight to Florida was delayed because of the storm. Like, every airline, every everything, right? So <sighs> then I got a notification. I was like, well, I'm going to just go ahead and go to the airport because you just never know what's going to happen. So I waited a little bit and then I went to the airport and, um,. I got another notification that the flight was delayed until like 10:46, and would it be getting in until after 1 a.m obviously because of the time change and then it just kept getting pushed back and i had the hardest time parking because literally everybody was par like every parking garage was full in new orleans it was just a mess right so then the flight started getting pushed back like it was no longer at 10 it was like leaving at 9 9 50 right and i was like oh my god i'm still in the freaking parking garage and it's almost eight o'clock i knew the tsa was gonna take four freaking ever um but we got through and by the time we got through tsa it was like 30 minutes before we were boarding and we boarded on time and the flight was so smooth but i didn't get in until 12 40 a.m and then i stayed up i ate some sushi in the middle of the night <laughs> Cause I was like, I'm so hungry. I hadn't eaten all day. I don't know I'm telling y'all this. And then I didn't go to bed until four. And then I got up early and went to the freaking beach and forgot to do any um any footage. So I took got my nails off because I know I just in this vlog did my nails, but I have suddenly got obsessed with seashells. So I have a really obsessive personality. And when I get interested in something, I have to like learn everything about it and I become really obsessed with it, even if it's just for a short period of time. And this morning I found the most beautiful seashell. And then I realized there were people that do things, something called shelling and like connect, collect shells. And some of them are like rare. And so I was like, I'm getting those nails off. So I just left the spa and I'm gonna get, a, I got a quick bite from freaking taco bell because i want to go back to the beach if you guys can see my skin already has that freaking luster i don't know why i'm saying freaking so much it already has this luster that i get when i've been on the beach um but i got my nails cut off and got a, just a regular gel manicure of pink so that i can go find me some more shells oh no it's already but just so i can go ahead and find me some shells so um tomorrow we're going to st augustine for another beach but tonight i'm going to coco beach so i'll show you guys um that and like if i find any seashells all right so this is actually coco beach the sound of the waves was so nice so i just want to give you guys a second to listen to it and kind of just have a little beach time <laughs> so i hope you guys enjoyed your beach time this is also coco beach but as we were leaving i was like oh my god this like archway was really stunning so i was just acting absolutely ridiculous at this point um but we are about to go to st augustine so i have this random clip here because i wanted to show you guys the tour that we took and just give you a little time to hear a little bit about um st augustine we were on this thing for like three hours but i just gave a little bit of a clip and i really liked our like tour guide who was talking to us because he was saying every Thing that was in my head like he was so blunt so i'll just give you a minute to listen about st augustine secondly they can get stupid hot here in florida these narrow corridors actually help to funnel the breezes off the Got it, into the interiors of the city to naturally cool it down something called the renewal effect and on our right hand side are you good? Make 
decision. Does anyone else think that? On the right here, so we're going to pass up the Casa Mania. Not only is this a great restaurant, but it also has some really unique details to its construction. The first thing I'd like to point out is going to be the first yellow pillar with a with a light on top of it. You can see the coquina stone behind that yellow paint. Now, through a side fence into a side yard where they probably keep a couple of goats and chickens, this is how the original Spanish colonists would have entered their one story, very small one to two room coquina home. When the British arrived, the British would have added a second story wooden structure on top. Most likely the British would have lived upstairs, had a business or a storeroom in the original Coquina home. The British would have added a door directly onto the street and plate glass into the Spanish windows. The Spanish windows, on the other hand, look more like what we find on the right and the left. Holes cut into a Coquina wall with a cheesecloth screen placed in that hole. When the British lose the Revolutionary War, all the British that were here went to the Bahamas. Good for them. But they left those poor Menorcan people stranded on that new Smyrna plantation. Starving, the Menorcan people followed their religious leader, Father Pedro Camps, here to St. Augustine, where they were able to establish themselves in the wake of the British's departure. Now, this is Spanish Street right here, okay? Down on this side of the street, kind of by where the Floridian restaurant is, my friend, he's got a place called the Odd Macabre. And what they do is scavenger hunts around this. I was really hungry and we were really tired because we had been on that thing for so long. So I just want to show you how utterly ridiculous I can be when I'm hungry. We were literally just eating random barbecue. It's freaking nasty. It's chocolate. I got you all that. I got beans, green, tennis, tomatoes, chicken, turkey, lamb, ram, you name it! I don't think that's how that goes. Oh, it's just the Mm-hmm. Why are you over there? Making my plate. Making my plate. Or I think there's Yes, Alright, so while we're talking about food, I want to show a couple of the things <laughs> that I ate while I was in St. Augustine. Honestly, there were so many little shops to stop in and I didn't even film half of what we did in St. Augustine and I will really plan to go back. So this was called Mayday Ice Cream. It was hand-churned local ice cream and you'll just see how many flavors were available. It was really hard to decide what to get and everything was good. We all tasted each other's ice cream and every freaking flavor was good. I'm lactose intolerant. I didn't even care. I think I ended up getting, I know I got blueberry something and like one with like Oreos in it. It was really good. So I'll show you the ice cream that I had. And then after that, I'll show you another meal that we had. I really like Fogo de Chao, which is a Brazilian steakhouse. And so we went there as well. But those are just a couple of the places that we went. Oh wait, Fogo de Chao was in Orlando. Pay me no mind. I'll show you Orlando later. All right, so if it's one thing I'm gonna do if I'm in any city that has water, I am going to get on a boat. So this was um, a night cruise that we did and I actually liked the captain. He gave us a lot of like history. And we were looking for like wildlife. He wanted to see manatees. I never saw the manatee that he saw, but anyway, this is just um, the night cruise that we did. And then I think I'm gonna come back and show you guys just a, a view of the actual city of St. Augustine so you guys can get a feel for it. Honestly, it felt like we were in a completely different place. and. A Again, I will definitely go back to St. Augustine. So just enjoy this cruise a little bit and then I'll show you guys the city. Uh, we're going towards a high tide basically. Uh, we are tidally influenced four to five feet every six hours. So uh, low tide was a few hours ago and we're going towards a high tide that'll be maybe nine o'clock. So this is uh, again where it all kind of started. Um, the first mission was set up here, Nombre de Dios.
right guys so about 20 minutes outside of st augustine is a beach called matanzas beach and it was actually the location of a massacre and i don't want to talk about that but it's stunning so this is a clip of it um the next morning we got up and went to it for sunrise and absolutely no regrets it, it was beautiful um no one was there also the the bridge crossing back into st augustine was really important for a lot of people to see there was like this marble lion i can't remember the significance of the marble lion but lots of people were stopping to see it so i will give you a clip of it as we're driving by and then i'll show you um a little bit more of the the city center of st augustine which again it's my kind of city it didn't seem like there was a lot of like clubs it was just a lot of lounges and live music and lots of architecture just the kind of city that i like the kind of place that i like it honestly felt like you could have i think i've said this before you could have told me i was in another country and i would have believed you um which is so shocking for florida but we won't talk about that anyway um after that like our tour guide the day before gave us so many little tips of like places that were cool to see so we did actually go to i think it was called Flef. don't get what there it is uh flagler college and he was like just walk into the lobby and you'll understand why it's so beautiful and honestly when we got there i was like i don't understand i mean it's a pretty college but i've seen lots of pretty colleges and then when we got in the lobby i still was like okay it's really pretty and then i realized why it was so stunning and you'll actually hear me tell my mom like you have to do you have to look up when you look up you realize exactly why it was so stunning so just keep watching you'll see exactly what i mean Look up, mama. Look up. <laughs> this is why I need to go. This is why I need to go to Italy. So as we were walking and exploring St. Augustine, I fell in love with how big the pothos were. Like that's a golden pothos in that tree. And so I kept like walking into stuff <laughs> because I kept looking at all the plants in this area. It was really, really stunning. And I just got sidetracked and forgot to film anything else. There were so many little places that we stopped in. So, so much cool stuff, right? But then we went to Orlando. And so this is the, the hotel that we stayed in in Orlando. What? In Orlando. It was so pretty outside. Like I can't even I can't even talk about like just the greenery of this hotel was so pretty. Um but as we were outside so we were sitting on the balcony eating dinner and they announced that it was karaoke night and this girl got up and said that she was going to sing with me and I was hating outside the club honestly because I was like nobody can sing with me and she got up and sang with me like she did a really good job so I'm gonna show you the clip of her singing with me and then I'm gonna show you what else we did in Orlando she Woo! 
We are bare Ross. All right, now we enter the part of the vlog where I'm super torn because I, I don't like the idea of animals in captivity, but I do enjoy aquariums. So we ended up going to SeaWorld, which I didn't know we were gonna go to. And I've never actually seen dolphins as big as we're in this show. So although I was super, super, super torn about it, um, yeah, I ended up enjoying it. Like, I've never, I, I never gone to SeaWorld and I don't really, sometimes I go to aquariums and if you've seen that video where I turned down my dream job, it was actually at an aquarium. Um, but that's neither here nor there. We also saw the orca show and I also didn't know that orcas were as big as they are. Um, so we wrapped up the trip. We did a couple more things after this. Like we went to the outlet mall and a couple of other places around Orlando. And what is it? Is it iDrive? Is it iDrive? We went to iDrive and did a few things there. Um, but we did finish our day walking through SeaWorld and we did the like little aquarium, actual aquarium part of SeaWorld. And there were a few things I wanted to do. Like I wanted to ride the, I think it's the Manta and a couple of other things that were at the park. But ironically that day, everything seemed to be closed for maintenance. And once the things reopened, I was like, yeah, are y'all really closed for maintenance? I don't really trust it. I don't really want to get on something that was just being repaired. Um, and I don't think that it was actually routine maintenance. So anyway i um really did enjoy this trip it was a good time it was the first time i'd actually seen my sister in a few years um so it was a really good trip uh, but after that i wound up just it was really hot that day so after i think we did end up going to eat before we went to the outlet mall and did a few other things but i'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up in the next little clip for you guys Alright, so after everything was all said and done, I came back and just hung out in the hammock. Um, there were a couple of hammocks around the property, and as you can see, I don't know why this clip is in slow motion, but this property was really, really, really stunning, and absolutely any place I go, if it has hammocks, I'm going to lay in them. Um, so I was really tired at the end of it, as usual, so this is how I wrapped it up, and then we flew on home um, in the middle of the night because our pilot had an issue and had to leave, and we had to wait forever to get a replacement pilot, but we flew on back in to New Orleans um which is you know like a, only an hour hour and a half for me uh, more like an hour and a half um and as you can see from above New Orleans is really really beautiful um you kind of forget when you're driving around the city how pretty it is from up high but yeah thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one don't forget to subscribe <laughs>